Well, hello everyone. I'm speaking to you today from my home because, like you, we are all under a or under government instructions, uh, which we should follow. Uh, but knowing that everything now that's taking place for us is all going to work out for good. Today, I'm so pleased to be able to talk to you all. I've not seen you for quite some time due to my own confinement before this confinement of coronavirus and therefore I'm so pleased to be able to talk to you today and just to simply say this is the day the Lord has made so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now I want to share some things with you this morning not merely to preach a message but to talk to you about some principles from God's Word that I know will help you and will help me through these times that we are presently living in. And I want to take you first to two scriptures, uh, one from the Old Testament and one from the New. The first one is the very first commandment, which is found in Exodus chapter 20, and I am reading from verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, for this is the first commandment and the greatest of them. Today, I just wonder who the God is that we worship. We all say that we worship the Lord our God, but in all that's taking place, I wonder if he is really first in our thinking, our thoughts, and our speaking. Let me illustrate this from a story that took place a number of years ago in my life when ministering in the Midwest of the USA. I was in a meeting and during the break in that gathering, a lady came up to me who was known as a very godly, prayerful, Bible-believing Christian. She sat down with me and she said, I'd like to tell you a part of my testimony. And her testimony went something like this. She said, I was praying one day and the Lord said to me, you are to have no other gods other than me as number one in your life. She said, Lord, I don't have any other gods. He said, what do you talk about most of the time when you're with your friends or in your mind when you are alone? And she said, well, Lord, you know I have many ailments and I'm not a well person. And he said, and that is what you talk about most of the time. He said, most of your time in your thinking and most of your time in your speaking is simply talking about your illness. And you always say to people, I have this sickness. Now, God spoke to her about that and she repented of that attitude that she had had for so long. She suddenly realized that her mind was dominated by something other than God. Her speaking was dominated by something other than Christ's words. And she repented of that attitude that she'd had. The result of that was, within inside one year, her sicknesses, many of them major ailments, and others lesser ailments, were completely gone from her life. She had been influenced by something that she had made a God, that is someone who had taken the place of the God that she really in her heart loved. Don't let anything take the place of God in your life. As I've watched programs on the TV here, in the news, etc., I've been told to take the advice of the scientists, to listen to the facts, because they have the answers and we must follow them. I believe that we must follow the instructions of government concerning our distancing and social distancing, etc. But there are things that I can clearly say I cannot follow, and it's simply this one. The scientists are men, created by God, and God is the creator. He is the one that has the answer to the things that we face. God alone is the one who made the scientists 
And if there's any breakthrough, it's going to allow the scientists to get the answer because he's going to put it in their mind. God is number one. And that is the first thing I want to say to us. No matter what we face, always remember, there shall be no other gods before him. Jesus Christ is number one in our lives. The second thing that I've noticed in this challenge that we are facing is as I walk around, I see people who, whose thinking is totally negative. I met a lady the other day, and she said to me, um, fear, it's crippling me. I said, what are you afraid of? She said, I don't really know, but I'm afraid. God has not given to us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. God wants us at all times to be able to think his thoughts. Come for a moment with me and turn in your Bibles to Psalm 91, a great psalm. And I want us to read some scriptures together right now so that we encourage each other in the things of God. Psalm 91, and we will read first of all verses 1 to 3. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare to the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I am trusting him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from the plague. Read a little further to verses 9 and 10 of that psalm. If you make the Lord your God your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you and no plague will come near your dwelling. These are the promises of God that he wants us to fill our minds with. He wants us to know, as Isaiah said in his, in his book, in chapter 54, he said, no weapon formed against you. There has been a weapon formed against us. It has a name. But there is a name above every name, the name of Jesus. But he says, no weapon formed against you, even though formed, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Why? Because his spirit lives in you, and greater is he who lives in you than he who is in the world. God has a plan for you, says the prophet Jeremiah. A plan for success, not for failure. A plan for life, not for death. And therefore, you have to fill your minds with good things. And as Jesus said, don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to put on. The Lord knows about these things. He's going to look after us. Don't worry about them. And God always says to this, when you know this in your life, and I know it in mine, we can go out into the world and declare simply this, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. The third thing I want you to notice is this, which I've noticed with this uh, disease that is a challenge. Look at the footprints it's leaving behind. Many years ago I was out in Africa with my brother and we had a guide. His name was Moses. Great name. He was a great man. And we were in the jungle area and we were walking down a, a dusty path and as we were walking down, he suddenly stopped us. And then he pointed to the, the, the dust on the ground, and there was a, a mark in the dust. And he said to us, be careful, snake. And lo and behold, as we went further, we saw the snake. He said, that's not a good snake. So we did a little circuit around the, that area where the snake was. But he had a warning because of the footprint. The snake had left a mark. Everywhere that I go and all the people that I meet today in this situation, they have certain marks about them. The mark is fear, a lack of joy, 
no peace, discouragement, no hope. Jesus said, these are marks not of the invisible person, but it's the invisible making evidence of what his character is like. These are marks of an evil one, a destroyer, a liar, an accuser. It is Satan. The virus is not from God. God is a good God. God loves us. God wants us to succeed. God wants us to achieve. God wants us to live. God wants us to enjoy life. God wants us to enjoy a full life. God wants our children to grow up, not living in fear, but always living in the God and knowing the God who is giving them at all times life and miracle and power and blessing. But I see a robber. I see a thief. I, th I see a stealer. The invisible bill has left a trace. We are not merely combating a virus. I pray that God will give understanding to doctors and researchers and God will protect them. That's what I want and we all want that. I want God to open up the minds of researchers so suddenly they can find an antidote and uh, an answer to this problem. But behind it all, there is someone who wants to destroy mankind. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But, here's the joyful news. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it in abundance. Enough for yourself, enough for your family, enough for your friends, enough for your neighborhood, enough for your town, enough for your village, enough for your city, enough for your nation, enough for your world. There's enough life to go around if we only trust God. I want us all today, in our own hearts, to renew our dedication of putting God first, to putting Him number one. Secondly, to allow our own minds to, the, to be the baskets of the seeds of faith, of words, God's words in our life, that the only thing that we are prepared to believe is what He says. And the third thing is simply recognize our true enemy, but recognize above all else our true Savior. So today, if you were listening and watching, and you've never ever committed your life to Jesus Christ, today is the opportunity to do that. If you feel things are falling apart in your life through many trials and difficulties, today Jesus simply says, come unto me and I will give you rest. Today, above all else, I want you as a people to know this, that God is for us, and if he is for us, who can be against us? I am for you, and praying for you all. I ask you to pray for me too, that as we come through, and through we will come. We will come through all this strengthened, and knowing the abundant grace of God and favor, having seen many people come to know him through all of this, because God loves his world and people will turn to him because they don't want to be taken with a destroyer. They want to be taken up with him who gives us life. God bless you today. Smile and see the world smile back at you simply because God is in control.